Fill our minds with your peace and our hearts with your love. Amen. As nurturing as any mother could be, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Can we pause here and rest for a while and bask in that love? It has been eight weeks since most of the city has been sheltering in place, either alone or with housemates. Initially, there was shock and awe for the first few weeks. Since then, there has been fear, loss, anger, despair, loneliness, depression, anxiety, and death. We have adapted, but it has been really hard for everyone and painful and gut-wrenching for many. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For all of you who have thought about end-of-life matters in your funeral, which we all should do regardless of age, you may recognize that this morning's gospel is one of four gospel passages in the Book of Common Prayer for the burial of the dead. The selection from John 14 describes God's house as having many rooms. Among the passages given for the service, this reading is popular, I suspect, for a few reasons. For one, it may be among the most inclusive passages of the options given. We can envision there being a big house with rooms for all of us, for all of us who are slightly imperfect. Some of the other gospel readings set the bar a bit higher. In this house, there is room for Stephen from the story that we heard this morning in the book of Acts. Stephen is remembered for both being the first deacon of the church and the first martyr. During the early days of Christianity, when the first disciples were preaching and baptizing many, it came to their attention that widows among them were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. In response, seven men of good standing were called and ordained for service. Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, was among them, and he went on to do great wonders and signs with grace and power. As we know, ministering to those in needs can be risky business both then and now, when we are called to stand against the prevailing social and political norms of the day. Stephen was eventually charged with blasphemy against Moses and God, and he was stoned to death, thus becoming our first Christian martyr. Among those present at the brutal murder of Stephen was Saul. While it is not clear whether Saul participated in the stoning, it is written that Saul approved of killing Stephen. In fact, it was on this day that severe persecution against the church in Jerusalem began and was led by Saul. Saul entered house after house, dragged off men and women, and committed them to prison. Over time, he would threaten and murder many Christians. This continued until that day when on the road to Damascus, the Lord spoke to Saul in a flash of light that blinded him. This conversion experience, the moment in life when the Lord became known to him, resulted in the shift from non-believing to believing in Jesus. Saul changes his name and becomes known as Paul. Such experiences of conversion can simply be a deepening of faith or clarity on how one is called to serve. Paul spends the rest of his life traveling throughout the Middle East, preaching the gospel and gathering people who become Christian communities. Eventually, Paul will write from prison as he continued to teach and preach the good news in Christ. This is new life. This new life would promise Paul a place in God's house forever. Then there's all of us, followers of Jesus baptized into the Christian church as a diverse group of people of varying beliefs and of different places on our journey of faith. We do not all agree in right belief. Rather, we reflect the, the full beauty of God's creation. From the outside looking in, Christians in general are occasionally judged for falling short of these teachings. 
To unbelievers, we can be seen as hypocritical because of our human nature. While this can be true, part of being Christian is a lifelong commitment to listen and learn and digest the teachings of Jesus as we strive to live more faithfully into the commandments to love God and to love our neighbor. It is actually through this process of living together that we grow as Christian, as a Christian community. All of us baptized into the body of Christ are promised to be raised with Christ, to have a room in God's big house and many rooms forever. There is room enough in God's house for us too. In reality, none of us know knows whom God will welcome home. I want to believe that there's going to be room in God's house for everyone, especially those of us known only to God by their love through word and action. This is the God we know through his teachings, not a God who is exclusive, but a God whose love for us is never-ending similar to the love, ideally, of a parent to a child and a child to a parent. For those of us who believe that God's love does transcend all human constructs, we pray that there is room in God's house for many more than we could ever imagine. What is uniquely Christian about God's house of many rooms and the burial of the dead is resurrection. It is joy despite the great sorrow. Our Book of Common Prayer reminds us, because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. We have the certainty that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This joy, however, does not make human grief unchristian. The very love we have for each other in Christ brings deep sorrow when we are parted by death. Jesus himself wept at the grave of his friend. So while we rejoice that the one we love has entered into the nearer presence of God, we sorrow in sympathy with those who mourn. As Christians, we proclaim that God is present in the moment of creation and at the end of life, both the Alpha and the Omega that we celebrate at Easter and throughout the year. This makes not only Mary, mother of Jesus, but all mothers, God bearers of life and love. Today we celebrate our mothers just as we celebrate Jesus' birth and our own birth each year. This is not simply a Hallmark holiday. Sadly this year, the hearts of many mothers are troubled because of sickness, loss, and death. I can hear and feel your pain in your voices and through your words via emails, texts, and online posts. The, love of a, the loss of a loved one is always heartbreaking. But this year, it has not been one death. It has been many deaths for some of you. Please know I continue to hold you in my heart and prayers. Nor can I imagine the anguish of Ahmad's mom on this day. Tragically, we know that she is not alone. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where you, where I am, there you may be also. This is our Easter promise and our hope to come. The metaphor of God's house of many rooms is heavenly, where we find our forever home and can rest in peace, a place where we dwell in the near presence of God forevermore. The big question is whom will we meet? We expect to see Stephen, the righteous servant, and Paul who repented to, and received new life. 
I expect to see all of you, my sisters and brothers in Christ worldwide. I hope to see everyone who gives of themselves in love and service, who strives for justice or dies innocently, and who desires to rest with God. This note about desiring God is necessary if we are truly to honor each other and not simply those and not simply impose our beliefs. This much must be known. In a perfect world, as followers of Jesus, this is where we find home daily with God, even as we shelter and with the people we love for as long as we have together. And in this parish home, may there always be, always be room, a place for everyone who seeks God, who wishes to grow more deeply in relationship with God and each other. This is my prayer for all of us. Amen.